We've done a number of videos on the upcoming MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch, covering everything from the design to the performance, the release date, the price, and so much more. However, I wanted to do one more video, this one, to recap everything into a single video. There are also a few brand new details which I want to cover as well, but most of this video serves as a merger of all the info that we've reported before, of course, everything in one place. So without any further ado, here is a comprehensive video on the final leaks and rumors on the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch. If your Mac runs slow, don't worry because this isn't always caused by the hardware, but by the software bugging down your machine. Clean up your Mac with Clean My Mac X, our sponsor for this video. I've been using Clean My Mac X for a few years now, and from what I found, it is the best all around tool to speed up your Mac. With a free trial as well as a 30 day money back guarantee, you can start trusting your Mac again with Clean My Mac X. Check it out using the link below. Starting off with the design, these new MacBook Pros will be Apple's fifth generation of MacBook Pros, so these are actually a massive change. The first generation came out in 2006, the second in 2008, then 2012, then the cursed 2016 generation, and now we are going to have this one, which I believe will be the very best one yet. We have seen reports from Ming-Chi Kuo, Mark Gurman, and other sources as well that Apple will adopt a brand new design with the new MacBook Pros resembling the squared off form factor of the new iPad Pro and the iPhone 12 line. We've made our very own concept based on that, however, since then, we have seen a leaked schematic, which actually showed a bit of a different design. One that resembles the old white MacBooks with rounded corners, rather than the super flat design that we believed. Lugmiani released a concept in partnership with Renders by Ian, based on this leaked schematic. Now, since this schematic was actually from an Apple supplier, I believe this to be the most accurate render of the upcoming MacBook Pro. And I gotta say, I do like this design, but I would have preferred a more squared off design myself. Now, the color is not confirmed yet, but we have seen reports that Apple was at least working at some point on a matte black coating for a potential MacBook. So I do believe that Apple will be offering a brand new darker space gray variant with these new MacBook Pros. Okay, let's talk about ports now. The M1 MacBook Pro only had two Thunderbolt ports, but as this 14-inch MacBook Pro will be replacing the higher-end four Thunderbolt port Intel model, it will indeed feature more ports. So on the left-hand side, we have a headphone jack, we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, as well as the brand new MagSafe connector. MagSafe is pretty much confirmed to be coming back at this point, as we have seen reports from very credible sources that Apple is actually considering reviving it. Now, I am curious to see though, if Apple will also allow us to charge via USB-C. Like, will we have two charging ports that we can use MagSafe and USB-C, or will we actually lose the USB Type-C charging functionality? The main advantage of MagSafe is, of course, being able to easily disconnect. However, we have seen reports that MagSafe could also allow faster charging on this new MacBook Pro, which realistically could also be done through USB Type-C. In fact, a recent report states that a new USB Type-C standard will allow charging speeds of over 200 watts, which is pretty nuts. So USB-C fast charging is doable on laptops, like we have other laptops that do it, but for some reason, money, <laughs> Apple will not allow us to do that. However, I do think that there is also a second reason. If you take a look at the iMac, the brand new iMac, this one got an Ethernet port in the power adapter. So I do actually predict Apple doing the same with the MacBook Pro and giving us one extra port that way too. On the right hand side, we have a couple of more ports. We have an SD card reader, which is coming back as it was reported by Ming-Chi Kuo and Mark Gurman. And then we have another USB Type-C port. We don't yet know if this is another Thunderbolt or just a standard USB-C like we have on the brand new iMac. And then we also have an HDMI port. Personally, I think that bringing back HDMI is actually a step backwards, as many newer monitors do come with USB Type-C cable nowadays, and bringing back HDMI would simply stop a lot of these manufacturers from adopting USB Type-C. Still, I can't complain, as it is always good to have more port options. We can't really see the bottom of the MacBook Pro yet, However, I do expect it to have the same feet as we have on the brand new iMac and the leaked MacBook Air, 
with those two long strips of rubber as opposed to having these four smaller feet. On top of this, the new MacBook Pro is set to be lighter and thinner than the current models, as the underside will now be removed in favor of a perfectly flat body. Speaking of the body, this is only the 14-inch model. There will also be a 16-inch model as well, which will have a larger body with bigger speaker grills that will deliver more powerful audio. According to Lukmiani's source, we would also get Dolby Atmos as well as spatial audio. I don't get how spatial audio would work on a Mac, but any improvements to the already impressive speakers are always welcome. The microphones could also be better on the 16 inch as we've had in the past, and the webcam is getting bumped to 1080p according to Luke Miani, which is believable as this is what we got with the brand new M1 iMac as well. Okay, now when we open up the lid, we get to see the beautiful 14 inch display, which is increased in size from the current 13.3 inch panel. The bezels are much thinner now, with the display also appearing to be taller, which would mean that we would have the very first aspect ratio change since ever on a MacBook Pro. And this is what we predicted with our concept that we did a few months ago, um, just by the way we designed it. If you wanna have a larger 14 inch panel in pretty much the same body shape, then you have to increase the top and the bottom sides. So you have to just reduce the bezel sizes and therefore the aspect ratio will change. On top of that, the MacBook Pro branding seems to have been removed entirely, which is something that we did see reported by other sources as well. The display, however, is likely going to remain an LCD panel, as opposed to the brand new mini LED that we've seen leaked before, as Apple is having some manufacturing issues with the new mini LED technology, reason why we only got it on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro and not the 11 inch as well. And speaking of that, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is seeing some significant delays when it comes to shipping dates. The mini LED display is only set to be adopted with next year's refresh of these MacBook Pros. And having seen the 12.9 inch mini LED iPad Pro in person, for the most part, you will not be able to tell the difference, as the mini LED brightness only comes in effect when you're watching HDR content. So you won't be able to tell the difference when you're just using your device normally, at least this is how it is on the iPad Pro. The black levels are indeed much better on the mini LED panel, but I never thought that Apple's LCD displays were bad in the first place. So I honestly do not think that you should hold off just because of that mini LED display. I honestly think that if you really need a new MacBook Pro, you should get this one instead of waiting for another year just for that mini LED display. Okay, now at the beginning of the video, I mentioned how if you have an old Mac or a slow Mac, you can easily speed it up with Clean My Mac X, our sponsor for this video. No one wants a Mac that takes forever to load up your emails or one that constantly beach balls when opening up Safari or one that takes forever to boot as it is bogged down by tons of login items. Well, Clean My Mac X can solve all of these issues. It is super easy to use. You just have the single scan button, which will automatically free up space, remove viruses, as well as free up your RAM. You can also disable login items that take up a lot of resources or uninstall apps the right way by removing any traces left in your Mac's library folder. Clean My Mac X also lets you free up space easily by allowing you to see exactly how much space the biggest files on your Mac take. Try the Mac SOS challenge and save your Mac from slow speeds with Clean My Mac X by using the link below as it is free to try and you also get a 30 day money back guarantee as well. Now the keyboard is actually getting some pretty big changes as we do not longer get a touch bar. Now this has been reported before a number of times that Apple had prototypes without the touch bar and judging by how bad the touch bar was received, I do actually see this happening. It is sad because I am going to miss it for things such as adjusting the volume or the brightness, but it is not the end of the world to see it go. Now, since the touch bar is going away, we do get the function keys back. We have the two brightness keys like before, we have the mission control key, the launchpad key has now been replaced by a spotlight search key, the keyboard backlight keys have been replaced by dictation and do not disturb, and then the rest of the keys are the same as before. We also get a brand new Touch ID button, which looks identical to the one that we got with the iMac, just in black, and I should probably mention that iFixit showed us that the circle seems to be identical to an iPhone's Touch ID home button, which makes me think that Apple is actually reusing parts here. All the function keys now have a full key size, which means that there is less room left for the trackpad, 
which is now shorter than before. I do like that we get more space in between the keys, as this will make the typing experience even better than it is now. However, don't expect to see any changes to the keyboard mechanism. Right, now let's talk about the specs. So, Mark Gurman reported that Apple will be launching two new chips in 2021. Chip 1 will launch in the summer, and this will have 10 CPU cores from 8 that the M1 had, as well as 16 and 32 GPU cores from the 7 and 8 that the M1 had. On top of that, this chip will support up to 64 gigabytes of memory as opposed to just 16 that the M1 currently supports. And then the second chip will launch by the end of the year, so likely in November, and this will be an 8-core processor with a 9 to 10 core GPU as opposed to 7 to 8 of the M1. However, we do not yet know what the maximum amount of supported memory is on this chip. Now, I predicted chip 1 to be called the M2 just because of how big the improvements are over the M1, and then chip 2 to be called something like M1S or M1T or M1X. However, we have seen some recent reports saying that chip 1 will actually be called the M1X as this will be essentially an M1 with more cores and zero architectural changes, while chip 2 will be called M2, and it will feature higher clock speeds than the M1 and a brand new architecture as well. The M1X is what both the 14 and the 16-inch MacBook Pros are set to feature. Now, Apple could go about this in two ways. They could either give us the exact same configuration options for both the 14 and the 16 inch, or they could restrict some of the higher end options, such as the 32 core GPU and the 64 gigabytes of RAM to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But even if the 14 inch only has a 16 core GPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM, it could still be up to twice as fast GPU wise as the M1 MacBook Pro was. The M1 MacBook Pro scores just over 20,000 points in Geekbench Compute. The 16 inch with a 5500M graphics scores just over 35,000, which means that a new 14 inch with a 16 core GPU could score as high as 40,000 points outperforming the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And then the new 16 inch could score up to 80,000 points, which would outperform even the top of the line 27 inch iMac with a 5700 XT GPU, which scores just over 72,000 points. But that's not all. Aside from the GPU improvements, the CPU isn't just getting two extra cores. In fact, out of those 10 cores, eight will now be high performance cores as opposed to just four like we had with the M1. Which means that we could potentially see up to two times the multi-core performance compared to the M1, making the M1X significantly more powerful overall than the M1 was. On top of this, I also expect the M1X to offer way more bandwidth for connecting external devices. And yeah, this is quite obvious in the fact that we do get a larger variety of ports than on any other M1 Mac before. So I do expect the M1X MacBook Pros to also allow you to connect more than just one external monitor, which has really been the main limitation of this M1 processor. But performance is nothing without a great battery life. The M1 MacBook Pro offered up to a 20 hour battery life. Now, the only battery life leak that we've had in terms of these new MacBook Pros comes from Luke Miani, who claims that we could see a battery life between 23 to 30 hours, according to its source, which is nuts. Now, something that you should be aware of is that the M1X also drops the efficiency cores from four to two, which in theory would indeed mean that we would get a better battery life, of course, but when you're not doing anything intensive that would normally make use of the high performance cores, we could potentially see lower performance than on an M1 Mac. As keep in mind, the M1X is not set to offer any clock speed improvements at all over the M1, which means that we would essentially get a dual core low performance processor with the M1X instead of a quad core low performance processor with the M1. But this improved battery life could also be a result of Apple dropping two energy efficient cores. Now, the full internal redesign also means that Apple could have more room inside for a larger battery. So the chances of these MacBooks featuring an improved battery life over the already great 20 hours of the M1 MacBook Pro 
they're pretty good to be honest. When it comes to the release dates, these MacBook Pros are expected to be announced at WWDC next week, according to what John Prosser stated, which also matches up with Mark Gurman's report that they would launch this summer. If you want to watch our full WWDC 9 things to expect video, simply click here and you'll see everything that we can expect at WWDC, as it is way more than just these two MacBook Pros that are said to be announced. Hint, there's also a potential Mac Mini. And finally, let's talk about the price. So even though we haven't really had any price leaks or rumors on this, I do predict the 14-inch to start from $1,800, replacing the current Intel model's pricing, and then the 16-inch to start from $2,400, replacing the current 16-inch model. At these prices, I predict the 14-inch to feature a 16-core GPU, 512 gigabytes of storage, and 16 gigabytes of RAM, with the 16-inch featuring the exact same. I also predict the 14-inch to be upgradable to up to 32 gigabytes of RAM at least, and 2 gigabytes of storage at least, while the 16-inch would be upgradable to a 32-core GPU, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and 4 terabytes of storage. Of course, that if Apple lets us configure the 14-inch with the exact same specs as the 16-inch, then that would be perfect. So I really do hope that they will be doing that. However, this configuration is what I believe to be the most likely option. But let me know in the comments what you guys think of the upcoming 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. For me at least, the 14 inch, if it will come with all of these features, which I believe it will, then this will be the perfect MacBook Pro or even the perfect Mac or the perfect anything uh, for me. So yeah, thank you for watching. Definitely subscribe if you want to see more in-depth tech videos like this one hopefully was and more Leaks and episodes. And definitely give this video a like if you have enjoyed it to let us know. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenoff Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.